We're going to demonstrate how to do a relative compression test on this car using a lab scope. We've got a Pico scope over here and we've got it set up so that on channel A we're measuring current using the 600 amp current clamp and we're going to put this around a battery cable. Turn it on, put it around one of the battery cables. You've got to make sure it's in the right direction. And we're going to hook this into channel A on the Pico scope over here. And then on channel B, we've got it set up over here on channel B so that it's just measuring voltage, but we've got an inductive pickup here because this car has coil on plug ignition system. We're going to use this inductive pickup. This probe just sits right on top of the ignition coil and it picks up the inductive uh, field around that ignition coil when the spark occurs so that we can use that to sync and recognize which cylinder is which on this relative compression test. So we'll hook that into channel B. We've got, to, we've got to ground that lead on the inductive pickup. That's the other lead that goes with this pickup here. And then we'll come over here and you could use a trigger. You could do this in different ways, but we've got it set up on a, a slow time frame. So it's 10 seconds per division. So it takes 10 seconds for this scope to go across one one division here and we're going to crank the car over and see what we get. Okay so now we've got a waveform here. We'll stop that and we're going to come over and analyze this and see if we can figure out what's going on. Okay now that we have this waveform let's analyze it. On channel A we have the blue waveform which is the current going from the battery to the starter motor. On channel B we have the signal coming from the ignition coil. I want to point out a couple of things that uh, they did wrong here just in case you're wondering. This isn't going to affect our outcome but uh, you might have wondered they didn't zero this amp clamp. So we're starting out here at about one and a half amps as our baseline instead of zero which is down here. Um, the other thing they did wrong is they chose the wrong scale for this amp clamp. Instead of being in a zero to 60 amp range, we should really be in a zero to 600 amp range. And so we can just multiply everything by 10. Right here, it looks like the current was around 15, 16 amps. It's really around 150 to 160 amps. Now again, neither of those things are going to affect this. I uh, just wanted to point that out in case you were wondering. So let's zoom in here. I'll zoom in and drag this back over here. We'll see the, the inrush current as the starter motor begin to crank. Let's move to the right. And I'm really interested in this area right here once we achieve a stable cranking RPM. Let's come over here. I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to turn on a filter for channel A. It makes it a little clearer here. And you can see now that the current is going up and down. And what this is, is every time that a piston comes up on the compression stroke, it's more difficult for the starter and it draws more current. So every one of these bumps represents a compression stroke on the engine. And what we're typically looking for is a very consistent set of compression strokes so that all the cylinders in the engine look about the same. You can see here they don't. So we've got a really good example here of an engine that doesn't have compression or good compression on all cylinders. Now, I also want to point out that this is a relative compression test, so we don't know how much compression this represents. All we can do is say, compared to this cylinder, the ones next to it seem to have less compression. So what we can do is we can look at uh, channel B and we see these spikes that drop down every so often. You can see they're consistent. They actually represent the ignition signal from cylinder number one, the ignition coil. That's the pickup that we had. And so it sparked right there before top dead center of this cylinder. So this is cylinder number one. That's how we identify this. Here's cylinder number one again. Number one, number one, number one. And you can kind of see a pattern there as well. There are eight cylinders in this engine. So between this point and this point, there should be eight compression strokes. And we can see that we're not getting eight very clear compression strokes. So let's bring out our rulers here. And let's line one up with the top dead center of cylinder number one, compression stroke. We'll do the same thing right here. So two engine revolutions later. And I can come down here to rulers and increase this to eight partitions. Now, 
we should see, every time we have one of these lines, we should see a compression stroke. You can see there's cylinder number one. Here's the next cylinder in the firing order. The next one should be right here. There's nothing. We don't see any compression at all. Then the next one is strong. Then we've got another one and two that are missing. And there's a, there's a cylinder that has compression. Here's one that doesn't. And then we're back to cylinder number one. So I'm going to zoom in on this portion right here so we can take a closer look at it. Okay, so now that I've zoomed in, this is cylinder number one, and I've got the firing order labeled over here. So this is cylinder number three. The next one is seven. This one is two, six, five, four, and eight. And then this final one is cylinder number one again as we start over. So if we look at this, we can see, well, the highest compression is in cylinder number two. I don't know what that compression is. Maybe it's 150 PSI, maybe it's 100 PSI. We don't know, but that's the highest. Now, relative to that one, cylinders one, three, and four have a little bit lower compression, but they have compression. On the other hand, cylinders seven, six, five, and eight have very little or no compression compared to this one. Now, the interesting thing about this engine, this is a Ford, and so this is how the cylinders are numbered on, on this Ford vehicle. The right bank, which is left on this picture, but the right bank on the engine has cylinders one, two, three, and four. So one, two, three, and four on that bank. And the other bank has cylinders five, six, seven, and eight. Five, six, seven, and eight. So we can see that whatever is affecting these cylinders that have no compression, they're all on the same bank. So it's very possible that we have maybe a broken camshaft or the timing chain is broken or something has happened that's affected compression on this bank. So that's how you can use a relative compression test to help diagnose the mechanical condition of an engine. And this is surely a lot faster than pulling the spark plugs for each individual cylinder and uh, measuring the compression of each cylinder directly. And in my opinion, it's more accurate as well. This is a great test to perform when you want to check the overall condition of an engine and do it very quickly.